Did you see my most expensive Black Series figures of 2021 video? No. No! Yeah, thanks for the support. Anyway, you should really come check out this video. It's different. Yeah, alright, I'll see you guys there. <laughs> no, really. It includes everything the Black Series figure video didn't include. My what? Convention exclusives, multi-figure packs. The first video only included the basic figures. Oh, that sounds awesome. That's right, it is awesome. Let's go check it out. Welcome to CKC, I'm Matt. And if you like Star Wars and Star Wars collecting, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe, like this video, and... Hold on to your butts. What's up everybody? I hope everybody's collecting is going well. I don't know about everyone else, but toy hunting for me recently has been pretty uneventful. Just finding the same old figures, holding on to that infinitely minuscule iota of hope that I somehow miraculously would come across the new Black Series, or even the TVC wave, or even the Antoc Merrick X-Wing exclusive, only to be continuously tormented by Grief Kargas and Admiral Akbars. So today, we have a new list. A list of the most valuable Black Series releases of all time. Now this is different from the most expensive Black Series figures list that I uploaded recently. That list was only single figure releases and it excluded the convention exclusives. But not this list. Oh no. This list includes the sets, the convention exclusives, multi-figure packs, the most expensive Black Series stuff right now. And we only have one rule. Am I the only one around here gives a <laughs> about the rules? I'm sorry Walter, but there's only one. No helmets or lightsabers. Given their higher price point, the whole list would probably just be helmets and lightsabers. And since that would be no fun, and because I don't collect them, they are not included. I also want to mention that if you don't already, please check out my Instagram at Toy Collector Star Wars, where I post most of my action figure news, sales, in stock alerts, everything you need to know about action figure collecting in today's online collecting world. So check it out. Or don't. Fine. Be that way. So without further delay, here's the most valuable Black Series releases of all time. But first, honorable mentions. Honorable. The Hascon 2017 exclusive Captain Rex. 160 bucks. In 2017, Hasbro had their own convention called Hascon, displaying all their new and upcoming toys from board games to action figures shortly after San Diego Comic Con of that year, where all their San Diego Comic Con exclusives were also available, giving collectors on the East Coast a better chance at obtaining them. But being Hasbro, they canceled it the following year, and then again the next year, and followed that up by canceling it two more times due to COVID. We've yet to see another one, and knowing Hasbro, we probably never will. But this Hascon had its own exclusive, this Captain Rex figure, which came in some windowless packaging and with some extra weapons all for 25 bucks which was instantly a hundred dollars on ebay as soon as the convention opened at this time rex had yet to be released in the black series and in true hasbro fashion there being no better way to appease collectors and honor the most popular clone trooper of all time by making him virtually impossible to get despite the head sculpt being before photoreal technology hasbro killed it on this head sculpt which is one of their best of that era rex was individually released in the black series a year later using photoreal tech which due to hasbro Bro's excellent decisions regarding wave assortment was also impossible to find, and eventually ended up at discount stores for as low as $2.99. That figure is on the most expensive Black Series figure list of 2021, which I recently posted, and is linked in the description of this video if you want to go check it out. The Hascon Rex was also made available twice very recently on Hasbro Pulse, only to Pulse members without any heads up whatsoever. But it was actually a really great release, too bad it wasn't more widely available. Number 10, the Target exclusive Imperial Shadow Squadron set, 165 bucks. In 2015, back when Black Series sets were more appropriately priced, and while the blue line was still being released, Hasbro dropped a bunch of exclusive figures and sets, one of which is this Shadow Squadron set, which included a Shadow Scout with Speeder, a Shadow Stormtrooper Commander, all for only 50 bucks. Nowadays, we get a piece of plastic that's only half of a toy for 50 bucks. Not only did this set look badass, with a black Stormtrooper and a black Biker Scout, I mean look at that two-tone paint job on that Biker Scout. It was the first Black Series release that wasn't from the original prequel trilogy. Every other release to this point had been OT or PT, but this is from the Star Wars Dark Times comic, so you knew that it would be in high demand among collectors and hardcore Star Wars fans. It's going for 165 now, but it's been as high as 220, and we'll see what happens in the future with the price. Being that the Bad Batch is covering around the same time era in Star Wars, maybe we'll see the Imperial Shadow Squadron in the upcoming seasons. Number 9, the Amazon exclusive Emperor Palpatine with Throne, 190 bucks. This one blows my mind. After Hasbro completely dropped the ball on the first and only other Emperor Black Series release, the Blue Line Palps, which may be one of the worst Black Series figures ever made, they quickly corrected that mistake. 
four years later. The Amazon Exclusive is a major upgrade and includes three interchangeable head sculpts vastly superior to the original Blue Line release, along with a great soft goods robe. Although being an exclusive, he was available for months on Amazon, and he was $40, which I think is a little high just to include a chair, but it was available for a while just the same. And then a month or two after Amazon was sold out, he shot up to over 100 bucks on eBay. Unless you really want that throne, I'd hold off on dropping two bills for this guy right now. Hasbro recently announced that the Emperor will be getting re-released in the upcoming archive wave. That's great that he's getting re-released again, but Hasbro has majorly slacked on Palpatine releases. We're what, like 300 figures deep into the Black Series and the Emperor has two figures released, both looking exactly the same? I mean, come on Hasbro, he's the main villain of a nine movie saga and he has two figures. Can we get some more versions of Palps, please? Now that's a couple of Rise of Skywalker Black Series action figures that I actually would buy. Number 8, the first edition Mandalorian, 185 bucks. The first edition Mando may be my arch nemesis in Star Wars figure collecting. I hate it to its core, merely for its existence, but I respect it for its rarity and the demand for it. And here it is again, on another list, continuously haunting me as the glaring hole in my collection. And as you might have seen, it's also on the most expensive Black Series 2021 list I recently posted, but I'm not going over it again. I just can't do it. You can check out the last list or a couple previous lists where this one was actually on it. I just can't do it do it again. And if you don't know about it, then please go check it out. Next, the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Black Series 40th Anniversary Kenner Deco Boba Fett, 195 bucks. Absolutely one of my favorite Black Series figures ever, the 40th Anniversary San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Boba Fett is one awesome figure. So after the success, particularly of Wave 2 of the New Hope 40th Anniversary figures, and before the release of the 40th Anniversary Empire Strikes Back figures, which included a regular Boba Fett release, Hasbro offered this special 40th Anniversary Boba Fett for San Diego Comic-Con 2019 with a special paint job to mimic the look of the original Kenner Boba Fett released in 1979. And they put him on a 40th Anniversary card with the same picture Kenner originally used with a glossy finish and a double rainbow reflective stripes around the card. Naturally, being Hasbro, a badass release like this was impossible to obtain, so it's sadly one of the only Black Series releases I had to pay scalper prices for. It's 195 bucks now, but it's been as high as 300 and seems to fluctuate between about 160 and 250 Being that it was such a good idea, Hot Toys then released their own 1-6 scale Boba Fett with the same Kenner paint job, which really looks amazing. Hasbro has since released a a few Black Series figures with their own Kenner paint job, none of which look as good or are even as cool as the Boba Fett one. An awesome release for sure, and I definitely think it's one of their best. Number 6, the 2017 Star Wars Celebration A New Hope 40th Anniversary X-Wing Luke, 200 bucks. So these two are generally around the same price and seem to alternate as to which one is slightly more expensive than the other. But the Luke exclusive was released first, being the exclusive for the 2017 Star Wars Celebration. But Hasbro did what they usually do and screwed this up too, as it sold out before the last day of the celebration, so some people who came just to buy this bad boy left empty-handed. The release itself looks pretty awesome, and it was released during the first wave of a New Hope 40th Anniversary figures, but just like the Wave 1 figures, it's really just a repack. And this one of the Black Series X-Wing Luke, the first Black Series figure ever. It does have a new paint job, which is noticeably better than the first release, but the figure has since been re-released in the first archive wave with photoreal technology. The card is pretty badass, with a glossy finish and a double reflective stripe around the edges just like the Boba Fett one. An awesome figure to have, and if you can get it for a good price, definitely pull the trigger. Number 5, the San Diego Comic Con 2017 exclusive Grand Admiral Thrawn set, 200 bucks. In 2017, Hasbro put out three Black Series exclusives for the San Diego Comic-Con. The Ray and Luke two-figure set, a special Luke and the X-34 speeder set, and this Thrawn set, all of which were also available at the one and only Hascon, also in 2017, which gave East Coast collectors a chance to get them too. One of the best major Black Series exclusives ever, and one of the only ones that doesn't come from the Nine movie saga. This Thrawn exclusive was released right after his appearance in Season 3 of Rebels. His individual figure was also released released around the same time, which has since been released again in the archive line. But the exclusive one includes some of Thrawn's prized trophies from throughout the galaxy, including Commander Gree's helmet. There's a place for everything, and it looks amazing. And it was 50 bucks. Nowadays, it'd probably be a buck four. It really gives credence to the phrase, they don't make them like they used to. Number four, the 2014 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Jabba the Hutt throne set, 225 bucks. 
Following the awesome 2013 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive release, which may or may not be on this list, Hasbro dropped this semi-companion piece to it, which is pretty badass itself. The Jabba set comes with Jabba himself, Jabba's hookah, and his Weasley companion, Salacious Crumb, all of which come in a very cool box designed to look like Jabba's palace and throne, which opens up from the top to reveal the set. It also has a slot for Han Solo and Carbonite, which is pretty cool, not to mention that Slave Leia had already been released in the Black Series, which could also go nicely with the set. But since this is an exclusive, that means the regular release has to be inferior, and it definitely was. Hasbro decided to release just Jabba as a deluxe figure in the Black Series. Now tell me Hasbro, what the hell am I supposed to do with just a Jabba? He came with zero accessories, nothing. And he had an inferior paint job, and right now, it'll still run you 80 to 90 bucks. It's even more frustrating knowing that a salacious crumb and hookah mold existed at the time, and both of them have just been collecting dust for seven years. I mean, come on Hasbro. Let's get a crumb release or something. Maybe even a re-release of a similar set for the 40th anniversary of the Return of the Jedi coming up. Anyway, it's pretty expensive, but it is a cool set. Number three the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con Boba Fett and Han Solo and Carbonite set. 235 bucks. In 2013, Hasbro released the first San Diego Comic-Con Black Series exclusive ever, this Boba Fett and Han Solo and Carbonite 2-pack, which to this day is pretty darn cool. Even today, when Boba Fett releases have been exhausted to the fullest extent with repaint after repaint and the Carbonite Han being re-released individually, it still looks awesome, and I'd buy it for retail price right now if it was available. Now imagine seeing it back in 2013, when only a few Black Series figures have ever been released. Your head would probably explode. It's definitely one of Hasbro's best Black Series releases, and it's such a simple idea. And the Han and Carbonite fits into the slot into the Jabba the Hutt San Diego Comic-Con exclusive release the next year. It goes for about 235 now, but I've seen it as high as 400. An awesome Black Series release for sure, and a must-have for Boba Fett fans. Number 2, the Entertainment Earth exclusive Clone Trooper 4 pack, 300 bucks. Starting in 2015, Hasbro started releasing Black Series figure 4 packs, exclusive to specific retailers, the most expensive of which is this Clone Trooper 4 pack, exclusive to Entertainment Earth, the second Entertainment Earth 4 pack exclusive released. It came with a 501st Clone Trooper, a Shock Clone Trooper, a 212th Clone Trooper, and a 442nd clone trooper in an accordion-like box that actually looks pretty cool. You think it would have sold like hotcakes, right? Wrong. They almost had to give them away to get rid of them. Having multiple sales of 50 bucks, and I think I remember it got as low as $34 at one point. And at that time, there really wasn't a lot of clone trooper releases in the Black Series. A complete 180 from the TVC releases only a few years before, which makes it even more surprising that it didn't sell. But as soon as they were sold out, the price started rising, and at one point it was over 400 bucks. And not surprisingly, it has taken the genius marketers at Hasbro until now, present day, five years later, to start releasing these clone troopers individually, as the 501st trooper is now an archive release, the 222nd trooper is, God help us, a Walgreens exclusive that's coming out this year, and the shock clone trooper is a Walmart exclusive dropping in about a month. That one's from the Bad Batch, but you see my point. And because of these releases, the price has dropped some, but it still will cost you a pretty penny. Number one. The Walmart exclusive Mexico 4 pack, 350 bucks plus. One of my favorites on this list, and certainly one of the strangest, this four pack started showing up in Mexican Walmarts beginning in October of 2014. It cost a thousand pesos, which was about $77 American at the time. Everyone expected a wider release, or at the very least, a US release, but it just never came, and expectation transformed into speculation about what the hell was going on. The figures included are Wave 2 of the Black Series, the second wave of Black Series ever, all of which, except Boba Fett, were peg warmers back then. Now Slave Leia will run you over over 80 bucks. Greedo is about 50, but back then they were just the unlucky figures to accompany Boba Fett in Wave 2. But when this 4-pack came out, Wave 3 and Wave 4 had already been released, so it has been theorized that Hasbro had an overabundance of Wave 2 sitting around collecting dust, and that, combined with the fact that that part of the world didn't receive enough distribution, resulting in a Walmart exclusive only in Mexico of three peg warmers and Boba Fett. It also eventually just ended up in the clearance aisle in Mexico, and was probably destined for the same fate in the US if it ever got released there. I personally think it's pretty cool, but the overall reaction to it by collectors wasn't good, as people felt that they were getting forced to buy three peg warmers just to get a Boba Fett. But it's still a great Black Series collectible, 
if you can find one. As of this video, there's only one on eBay, and the seller is asking $650. And then on top of that, has the audacity to ask the buyer to pay $22 for shipping. Other than that one, there was one that sold in March for $400. So if you can get your hands on one, go for it. So those are the most valuable Black Series releases right now. What did you think of the list? Which ones do you have? Which ones do you want? What other types of videos would you like to see? I'm always taking suggestions. I have some more videos on the way, so stay tuned. And thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and happy hunting out there.